agriculture contributes about 33% of all the emissions of the world, uh, depending a little bit on how you count it, but it's anywhere from 26 to 33. And we can't get to net zero. We don't get this job done unless agriculture is front and center as part of the solution. Hello and welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. In the midst of farmer protests and now transportation strikes, Europe is sinking deeper and deeper in a total chaos. And it is so sad and very concerning to watch. Europe's farmer protests receive very little coverage here in the United States, and you have to wonder why. Is it because seeing thousands of people block highways, protest, government regulation, set tires on fire in front of the EU parliament, might that become yet another much needed wake up call? All over Europe, farmers are staging truly massive protests against their own governments as response to net zero agenda 2030 policies. These policies were not up for a discussion, by the way. The EU farmers didn't get a chance to vote for or against them. Effectively, the green agenda, which includes increased taxes, canceled subsidies, extreme government regulation of small to mid-sized agricultural businesses that will drive these people out of business and likely on the streets because they will have no means to support themselves once they go bankrupt and are forced to shut down. I know I have many subscribers who live in Europe. Please leave a comment below with your thoughts on the protests. I would love to hear your take on why farmers started them and what you believe will be the outcome. First, I want to share with you the latest videos and images of what is going on. This is truly shocking, especially if you think about Europe maybe a decade ago, 10, 15 years ago. Now, it looks as though these videos were taken on a completely different planet. So far, farmers from Denmark, Germany, France, Romania, Poland, Greece, Portugal, and Ireland are taking part in these events. At the same time, there is a transportation strike going on in Germany and in France, with truckers and transportation workers blocking highways and effectively showing their solidarity with those farmers who are protesting. There are multiple videos from several European cities that I want to show you, and they will help you understand, they will help you get a better idea of the extent of these protests. Take a look. I'm out here to support the French farmers because I really do feel that the whole farming community right across Europe, not alone in France, Germany, but here in Ireland, are being absolutely uh, decimised by the politicians, the Green Agenda, and other factors too in the political circles that are de demonising farmers as criminals in food production. And the future for these is the young lads, my young lad here, this young man here and the families here behind me, they won't have farms to farm unless there's radical change people accept that we need food, we have to produce food, we will produce food given the chance to produce it, but currently under the circumstances we can't do it. Wahnsinn! Ja Leute, abonnieren, kommentieren, was hält ihr davon? Was sagt ihr dazu? Ich schreck mal so ein bisschen rum hier.
Farmers have blocked a border crossing between the Netherlands and Belgium in the protest at anti-farm, anti-food climate regulation. Truckers in solidarity with the farmers are dumping foreign wine imports and other goods. This is because net zero taxes mean vineyards in this particular case on the video will effectively make them go bankrupt. Quand, donc euh, de ce rond-point, donc au rond-point de proximité du péage de Galargue, direction euh, donc direction euh, Nîmes. Then today, I started seeing more and more of these videos with empty shelves. If you are in the EU, let me know if this is true. Apparently, grocery stores are running out of produce and fresh food, as you can see here in this video. So why are farmers protesting? What is the mainstream media telling us first? Here's our good old Politico telling us that protests around the EU reflect common grievances over debts, price pressures, even extreme weather, and cheap imports. Reuters, which I know you will tell me is just propaganda, but I want to share what is being told in the mainstream media. Reuters says European farmers protest against costs and green rules. But what is the real reason for these massive, truly massive protests across Europe? Agriculture contributes about 33% of all the emissions of the world. Uh, depending a little bit on how you count it, but it's anywhere from 26 to 33. And we can't get to net zero. We don't get this job done unless agriculture is front and center as part of the solution. But with a growing population on the planet, we just crossed the threshold of 8 billion fellow citizens around the world. We just crossed that in this last year. Emissions from the food system alone are projected to cause another half a degree of warming by mid-century on the current course that we are today. A two-degree future could result in an additional 600 million people not getting enough to eat. And you just can't continue to both warm the planet while also expecting to feed it. Doesn't work. So we have to reduce emissions from the food system to keep the 1.5 degrees alive. Why do we have to keep 1.5 degrees alive? Because scientists, as a basis of physics and mathematics, not ideology and politics or party labels or anything else, as a matter of physics and mathematics and some biology and chemistry have told us, these are the consequences. And we already see it happening. And almost everything they've predicted for 30 plus years now is coming true, but the problem is it's coming through faster and bigger than was in fact predicted. The real reason is the imposed government regulation that effectively makes it impossible to do business and to survive as a farmer. If farmers are forced to hang their hats and shut down, who will be in control of our food supply? And the second question that is equally important is, what quality food will we be consuming? The Guardian is reporting that some concerns, such as a plan by Berlin to phase out tax breaks on agricultural diesel to balance their budget, or a requirement in the Netherlands to reduce nitrogen emissions, are country-specific, but many are shared continent-wide. So these green rules, these new green rules, are not specific to a country, but they are adopted by the European Parliament and apply across the board. Europe's common agricultural policy is a 55 billion euros per year subsidy that's been ensuring Europe's food security for more than 60 years. It has been based on the economies of scale, which means common standards and bigger holdings. Since 2005, The Guardian reported that the number of farms in the EU fell by more than a third, 
and that's just in a span of 18 years. The EU's current regulations want the agricultural industry to become climate neutral by 2050. Additionally, these new regulations include halving pesticides by 2030, cutting fertilizer use by 20%, devoting more land to non-agricultural use, for example by leaving it or planting non-productive trees, and doubling organic production to 25% of all EU farmland. Farmers have said they face falling sale prices, rising costs, which together those two things make it impossible to do business, heavy regulation, powerful and domineering retailers, debt, climate change, and cheap foreign imports, all within an EU agricultural system based on the premise that bigger is better. Those are the key three words, bigger is better. Once farmers are bankrupted by these new laws, new rules, they will likely have to sell their land since they won't have any use for it and they won't have any money to keep it. While well, large transnational companies will have the funds to buy it, such as Monsanto, for example, and other ones similar to it. They will gradually increase their land ownership and use it to grow produce. This, of course, means that the production of food and its quality will be under the control of these corporations. Besides the net zero agenda, European farmers, as The Guardian reports, are very unhappy about unfair competition as the result of the EU waiving quotas and duties on the agricultural produce imported from Ukraine. The Guardian here says it depressed prices and increased the EU farmers' resentment. I will go ahead and end this video here. Unfortunately, it ends on a sad note, but I did feel that it was important to share the news with you and to kind of share a brief overview of what's going on in Europe and what it means. I would love to hear from those of you who live in the European Union, share your thoughts and what you are seeing in your countries. I'm sure other subscribers, other viewers would love to hear from you too. Thank you for watching. Please show your support. It does go a long way. Give this video a thumbs up. Consider sharing it and subscribe both on Rumble and YouTube. I would love to have you back for my next one tomorrow. I upload videos on a daily basis. And by the way, if you enjoy reading, find me on Substack, where among other types of content, you will find a weekly newsletter every single Friday afternoon with the key events and key economic data that will help you stay up to date on the most important news. I'll see you in my new one tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.